Hello and welcome to the Zero BI webinar number 28. Um, so the definitive guide to income statements today in Power BI, um, we will try to present tips and tricks uh, and a couple of new features in the Zero BI visuals, as well as uh, certain best practices that we have learned um, in order to make your financial statements Actually, not just income statements, uh, maybe also balance sheets and, and uh, cash flow statements, uh, more understandable, more actionable, easier to um, create, more flexible to work with, uh, much easier to maintain. All right, so let's start this. Um, I have prepared a new example. Uh, it's this one on the screen, and let me. Uh, just switch to my Power BI and show you a couple of things that uh, we planned to, to show today what we are going to build in Power BI. All right, this is my PL, my income statement. Um, it is a, a hierarchical uh, income statement. So, uh, of course, you can. Uh, um, expand and collapse certain rows. So every financial rows, uh, uh, financial statement has a sort of a hierarchy, right? Income statements have this, uh, like you know, your costs of goods sold um, that are uh, that have certain cost types, and then you know, of course, you can have multiple levels in this hierarchy. Uh, we have clients who have seven or more levels of this hierarchy, uh, so that this is quite important thing. Uh, next thing in every financial report, um, uh, custom calculations, uh, things like percentages, common size measures, uh, uh, gross margin percentage, that's one example, operating income as a percent of revenue, for example, or net income as a percent of revenue, and similar KPIs. Um, that's a That's a very standard way how to how to um, report in, in, in income statements. So just add those rows into your financial statements. Uh, so that, that's another important thing in, in, in profit and, uh, and loss uh, statements, income statements, also in cash flow, also in balance sheet. Um, then of course, comments, live comments. So if you switch to another month, you get different comments, of course. Um, and uh, switching between month to date, year to date, having all this. And uh, we've added one more switch this time. So you can switch from a PL to a balance sheet and then get you know, the balance sheet report within the same visual, again, with comments for the uh, balance sheet and everything. So the complete thing is completely flexible, completely dynamic. You can simply switch between the three holy financial statements right here with one simple slicer uh, and in basically one visual and another visual for, for comments. So um, the base for that is um, a very clean um, data model. So I'll, I'll talk about data models uh, first and then we'll dive into, into reporting features and, and so on. And as you will see, uh, we also have other views. Uh, typically you would, uh, report on a quarterly basis or monthly even. So there are lots of things that we'll discuss today. Um, uh, reporting structures like month to date, year to date, full year, uh, you know, you may have business units, right? So when you want to split your income statements by, by business unit, report by business unit. Um, you might want to present trends, all right? Trends of all of your key KPIs, like your revenue, your gross margin, your costs of goods, sold operating expenses and so on and so on you might want to do this uh with some forecasts maybe you have forecasted revenue until the end of the year and so on compare this to plan and so on um and uh yeah we'll throw in a couple of bridge charts as well so uh yeah hopefully this will be a very interesting topic today um so uh my name is Andre, I'm the founder and CEO at Zebra BI. I'm also Microsoft Most Value Professional. And today I also have our BI consultant, Tine, with me. So uh, 
Tina, would you say hi to the uh, to the attendees? Uh, thank you, Andre. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining today's webinar. Um, I'm pleased to announce that today we are having a record attendance, and uh, rightfully so, because we are having some really interesting topic ahead of us today. Um, so be sure to stay tuned. Um, Andre, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Tina. Um, Tina will also monitor the Q&A section. So if you have any questions while we are presenting, please just type them away in your in the questions box, and Tina will try to answer um, immediately. And we'll also do a Q&A at the end. So just make sure you you type your questions. We'll try to answer as many as we can. So the agenda for today. Um, so the a little bit about financial statements, Impa BI, data prep, financial data modeling, account hierarchies, regged hierarchies, um, income statement, uh, like the key elements of the report, um, how did we do the, 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 this report switch, um, a little bit about commenting, dynamic commenting, um, also the KPI trends and bridge charts that I've shown you. So that's the agenda. Um, we will share the resources and download links uh, the PBIX files and and uh, other material, and uh, we'll do a Q&A at the end. And yes, we are recording this, so uh, the recording will be available in two days, and it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to Zebra BI YouTube channel as well. All right, so let's start with this financial report and just take a look at the anatomy of a typical financial report. All right, so what do you need in order to build something like this? First of all, of course, the calendar, because you're reporting by month, year, and, 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 and so on. So obviously, um, the, uh, the calendar, then period calculations, switching between month to date and year to date, but also full year. Uh, so that's another component here. And then the big one is the account hierarchy. So this is really crucial for every financial report. Your the structure of your accounts needs to be clean and and merge probably from 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 maybe a, from 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 a couple of sources. Uh, it has to have a proper hierarchy hierarchy on on several levels and and so on. And this hierarchy, the structure of accounts, this chart of accounts is quite tricky because it always has certain subtotals. So the subtotals are, uh, for example, costs of goods sold um, and you know other groups of, of uh, accounts that you may have in, in your financial system. Um, then maybe you have some row formulae, right? So the row formula is like, like gross margin percentage and so on. You somehow need to, you know, uh, sneak them into the data set, right? Um, then you have uh, kind of like subtotals, but they are actually results because they are a result of, of a calculation. Um, so they are not just a subtotal in the sense that, you know, they just simply aggregate your, your financial data to a higher level, but uh, they are a result like a gross margin, for example, uh, which is course revenue minus a cost of goods sold for example or operating income which is the gross margin minus operating expenses right so it's a different type of uh, subtotal for example <laughs> again a complication in financial reporting um, another another issue another challenge in in, in a typical financial report uh, inverted rows right because the kpis that you're reporting on in financial reporting, in financial statements, uh, some of them are, are good KPIs like revenue and so on, and some of them are bad KPIs like um, expenses, costs, and, and so on, right? So you need to somehow handle this in your data model and also in your report, uh, in the visualization, your tables, in your charts, and, and so on. All right, um, then the report switch that I'll explain um, quite soon. And then, of course, the visualization, the tables. Uh, typically, financial reports rely heavily on tables, uh, but of course, you can make 
them much more understandable, much more actionable if you're able to turn certain um, columns in your tables into charts. So the best financial reports are always a combination of table, uh, are always a table chart combination basically where certain um, columns are simply turned into charts. Okay, so like waterfall charts and of course the variances because you're always uh, reporting your actuals versus previous year at least, right? Uh, or also versus previous uh, versus plan or versus budget or both previous year and budget and possibly also forecast or estimation or something, right? So um, of course, then you need to calculate the variances, display the variances in a typical report. And lastly, the comments, uh, especially if they are dynamic, uh, the comments are quite important for financial reporting because financial reports are typically delivered to the top management, the, you know, um, and um, these uh, group, this group of, of end users um, prefers comments. Uh, they need, uh, you know, to have short explanatory um, sentences, texts that actually explain what, what's going on. And uh, yeah, if you're able to integrate short comments into your, your reports, then this would be a, this will probably be a very well uh, received and um, very uh, accepted and, and used uh, report. All right, so how do you start building um, your financial reports in Power BI? First of all, um, you need to fix your data. All right, so that's a major challenge here. Um, let me first present like the ideal financial data model. Okay, so you uh, will have certain uh, you'll have certain financials. Um, so the 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 figures, your your fact table of of your financials. In the ideal case, this table should have only numbers, nothing else, only numbers. Okay, so in my in my picture here, I actually have some some account names that's. Uh, that's actually a glitch in my presentation here. So you should have like account ID, right? Which is just a key, uh, a key to your table of accounts. Then you have uh, some some dates or date ID, and then you have certain values uh, for different types of accounts. And then uh, you might have, um, you know, uh, a key of your business unit, the number of your business unit, and so on. And possibly, possibly also some scenarios like. Um, that this particular data is uh, actual data, plan data, forecast data, and so on. And in ideal case, uh, all of these columns would be numbers. All right, so that's your key fact table, the table with the data. And then around it, of course, you have dimensions. You'll always have a dimension probably called accounts or something like that. Uh, so this is the key dimension for the financial reports. Uh, it should contain the whole hierarchy of your accounts, the structure, everything. So it's a kind of a key component. And of course, this one is then related to your fact table to make sure that accounts will filter properly the, the values and, and so on, right? So, and then obviously the, the calendar here and the period calculations, which um, should be either a disconnected table, that's one option, uh, or you can use the, the uh, calculated groups also, that, that's one, that's another option how to perform period calculations. But for financial reporting, I think it's quite important that this is a separate, separate short little table that is typically, um, not connected to the um, uh, fact table, uh, so it's uh, that's why we call it a disconnected table. All right. Then uh, you might have business units, or if you're a large enterprise, you might have legal entities, um, or uh, you might have certain regions and 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 so on. But this is a typical thing. So this is the this would be the basic 
data model for financial reporting. Um, and if you want to also integrate dynamic comments, then you will have another fact table. And this time, this fact table uh, does have um, some text, all right, which is uh, comments, all right? The text for comments, it's only one, one fact table. And this table should be linked at least to your calendar to make sure that your comments will refer to a certain month, for example, in your data. But um, quite possibly, uh, it will also have to be related to the accounts because you will probably want to refer certain comments to specific accounts, like to, I don't know, product revenue or you know, uh, costs, uh, sp specific type of cost and so on. So uh, you will probably have a relation to your accounts. And if you want to um, comment specifically on different business units, then you will also relate the same table to your business units dimension. All right, so this is just a high level view of the data model. Um, you will see in my example, so this is now the picture of a real data model um, from, from my demo here. As you can see, I have the financials, this is my uh, fact table, and then I have some uh, comments, another fact table, and my business units, accounts, calendar, and period calculation table. All right, so um, let's now switch to Power BI. And let me show the, the data. Okay, so let me just open my, my Excel. So for my demo, all the data is, is in Excel. Um, of course, in a real world situation, you will connect to a general ledger database probably, and um, we'll also have to transform this data um, in certain ways, right? So what you, what you now, what do you actually need? So let me zoom in here. Okay, so um, the, uh, first of all, the, uh, the data. Okay, so this is my data. And typically, typically you will have something like all right, this is my account ID. Okay, so this is now the uh, this is now the ID of my account, so the number of my account. Okay, uh, this is now the link or the key or the ID of my business unit because in my demo here I have I don't know four different business units and so on. And um, also um, in the fact table you will somehow have to merge the the actual table uh, the actual data which in in my example here is marked with the ac for actuals right but we also have some data okay well in this case it's only actual then i have a separate i actually have the plan in a separate table this time so so it's a it's a, it will be a small challenge to merge those two tables together and preferably if possible uh, merge those two tables and also possibly the forecast, your forecast, if you have it, just uh, append all those rows into one single um, fact table for financials, as I have demonstrated in my, um, in my slide uh, just previously. All right, so this is, uh, this is the scenario. And then this is the data. Uh, this is the data. So each row is like, okay, th these are probably my my um, product. This is probably my product revenue. And then I have the values. Okay, if you're exporting from certain systems, then then you might have this situation where for each month you have a separate column. If you have this, then you will need to um, transpose the columns or unpivot those columns uh, and you do this in Power Query, right? Um, to make sure that all uh, the um, all the columns are actually transposed into into rows. Okay, so this is the this is actually this is the basis for my fact table, and then you will have the hierarchy of your accounts. 
<coughs> sorry. So this one is important. Um, and you will have all of your accounts here. So product revenue service and so on, um, organized into certain groups or multiple levels, like you might have a subgroup and then the uh, group, or you might have level one, level two, level three, level four, level seven, right? So these are all separate columns in this table. And for each of those columns, you need to have the ID, okay? So I have my account, here's the account ID. My account subgroup, my account subgroup ID. <clears throat> Now, um, the trick here that um, we have used <coughs> um, to bring the uh, report slicer into the report is that we have actually merged the accounts from the income statement, like my product revenue, my, my costs and, and, and gross margins and stuff like that, we have merged this together with the accounts from the balance sheet, which is the um, you know the, the liabilities, the um, yeah the uh, equities and now stock and then uh, yeah income taxes and then accounts payable and so on. So uh, uh, sorry, this is already from the cash flow, but a little bit up. All right, so um, yeah accounts receivable, you, you see, so intangible assets and so on. So basically all of your assets, all of your liabilities, all the accounts for that, the whole structure, right, of your accounts for the balance sheet is in the same table, in the same table. So this is the simple idea behind this data model here. Um, just append uh, the income statement accounts, the accounts from the balance sheet here and add another um, column that actually marks each row with this report type, okay? So what I can do now, I can just maybe filter out all of the accounts for the PL. all right? So these are my accounts for the p &L. It's actually quite simple here. Or uh, I can look at my balance sheet accounts. You see, it fits in the same structure, right? So because, um, this will work for most, most cases because, you know, um, the difference in these financial statements is, they, I mean, they're not so different. They have a certain structure and they have certain, a couple of levels here. And uh, so you can merge them together and then you add this report uh, type. Um, column to distinguish between them and this report type column will use will use this report co uh, type column for the slicer uh, a little bit later all right so this is this is basically this is basically this is the uh, important thing here and uh, I'll show you then another trick so we have a separate thing here um, we have listed certain we have marked certain accounts uh, certain rows here as uh, as an important KPI, right? So um, just remember this, there's another column here called is KPI and it just has a value of one. If, uh, if this um, uh, row, this, for example, um, my revenue and maybe my net income and so on are quite important. So I want to uh, mark this as a special KPI, and then this will help me build quick financial reports um, from across the financial reports, because now I can mark certain uh, rows, certain accounts from my p and and add certain um, um, important KPIs from a balance sheet, and also maybe from my um, cash flow, right? And then I can use this for, uh, for a quick, short financial statement uh, that has rows from the different, from all the three different financial statements, okay? Because I have merged everything together into one big table, I'm actually able to do that. 
Okay, so this is basically the data. This is basically the data. So we can go here. We can now go back here and um, now we can build our first um, report. So first of all, I will not deal today with the month versus year to date switch. We have covered this in our uh, uh, webinar called uh, the uh, top five DAX tricks. Okay, I will share the links later on. So we have explained this before in, in, our, in, in our previous um, webinar, Zebra BI webinars. Uh, I will also not show the whole technique for the commenting because this was our previous webinar, webinar Zebra BI webinar number 27, right? So, so this part here, the dynamic comments and the uh, switch between year to date, monthly, and, and so on, we already covered. So now I want to focus on this part here. Okay, so now that I have the, the uh, structure of my accounts, I can try to replicate this. So let me just duplicate this page and do a couple of quick things here. So I'll just delete this and just remove it. I'll start with the Zebra BI table. Actually, I'll use this one. All right, so this is the uh, latest version, the upcoming version of Zebra BI that has a couple of new features uh, that will be interesting, I guess. Um, so I'll take my actuals um, and I'll start with a comparison to previous year and now I'll bring in my accounts. All right, so, so these are the accounts at the lowest level here. It's a very simple income statement uh, like, like this and I'll do a structure. So I'll use the account group to create a structure here. All right, so now I have a structure of my account. Okay, uh, revenue, product revenue, and so on. So one thing that I'll do, I'll switch this. All right, I'll need a license key for the Zebra BI. Oops, sorry about this. Let me just quickly find my license key. Um, certain advanced features, of course, are... Um, Is it tough? Um, all right. Let me just paste this into my file here. All right, now I can do this. So first of all, I'll switch here to the waterfall chart. And I'll also switch here to the waterfall chart to make sure that this will make sense. Okay. So now I have my product revenue and my service and other revenue. Uh, right now it's sorted. Let's turn off the sorting here and just make sure that on the visual, it's sorted by account group. Okay, this is done. It's sorted by account group. Oops, now I have. So sorted by account group and ascending. Okay, so in order for you to get the sort order of your accounts right, Okay, you have to do two things. First of all, in your um, hierarchy of your account, so basically in your table of accounts, right, you need to make sure that the numbers, the IDs of your accounts are sorted in the right order. Okay, so typically you, you have this. If you don't have this, then add another col column, right, for each of those, for account, for account group, and so on, and make sure that the numbers here, the order of accounts uh, is exactly how you want it. Like product revenue is going to be my number one, then the next row, my next account is number two and so on. And the same thing for the account group. My revenue here is my first account group. My cost of goods sold are my second account group and, and so on, right? So you need to have this. Once you have this, you go back to Power BI and um, go to your, for example, account and now you click here on the sorting and instead of by default, this would be just sorted by the account name. So basically alphabetical, right? You don't want that. You want to sort this by the account ID, right? By the number, which is the sort order. Okay, so that's how I got the sort order right. Once I have this, 
uh, we can move on. So first of all, um, this structure here, now I need to make sure that the rows with uh, expenses, costs, and so on are inverted. So now basically I have two, thing, two, two options here. If you're using normal native Power BI visuals, there's no way how to handle this here. You actually have to go back to your data and um, make sure that your costs are negative numbers, right? Which is, uh, which is what a lot of people do, but it is actually better if you have uh, a positive number, like you have 3.2 million costs, right? That, that's it, right? But then, um, if you're using the Zebra BI visuals, now right click and make sure that you invert this number, right? So it's it just do it on the visual. So product cost is like this, service and other costs, it's all also like this. So this, these are now my total costs. As you see, this is a subtotal because this is a hierarchy in my, um, in my uh, chart of accounts, it'll already by default be summed up, okay? And also the expand collapse will work. So this part is, is okay. And now the gross margin is another type of, of, um, of a subtotal, uh, right? It's actually a result. So it should be, um, it should be just mark it as a result here in Zebra BI. So uh, now uh, the Zebra BI actually takes the uh, revenue and then takes the, the costs. It, it knows that these are it has to be subtracted here, so you'll immediately get the gross margin. Okay, at this point, okay, so you do the same. Let's just uh, click through through these. So these are the uh, these are my operating expenses. The operating income is my next result, and a little bit more income, other income. That's great. And so this is my income before income taxes. Then I have provision for income taxes. I'll Invert this. So, and finally, my net income. All right, this is it. So, this is this is how you handle the uh, subtotals, the uh, intermediate results, and the negative rows um, like costs. The variance is here calculated by the visual. Of course, if you don't use Zebra BI visuals, then you need to also add the variance to previous year, the relative variance to previous year, all the variances uh, to your model, you need to, of course, build measures index for, for that. But in Zebra BI, it's already here by default. Okay, now, uh, basically the last thing here is now the uh, formula. All right, for the gross margin percentage. All right, how do you do that? This is available with um, the new version 4. 0.5 of Zebra BI, which is being released as we speak. So basically tomorrow it will be available for um, for all of you who are using the, 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 the Zebra BI from, from our private distribution. And for all of you who are using the version from the app source, uh, it will be available um, uh, it'll be available in a couple of uh, weeks when uh, Microsoft will also uh, recertify the, the new update. So with Zebra 4.5, you now have the uh, formula editor. All right, so now I can add the gross margin in percent. So you type the name of your KPI here, and now you just simply say, all right, now I want to say uh, gross margin divided by revenue, right? So, so start typing gross margin and then Zero BI will actually find uh, find the right account here. So you can press tab or click, right? So, but if you press tab, that's the fastest. Then you type the operation. So I'm dividing here and I want to divide this by my revenue. Tab, that's it. So this is my formula now. Uh, now in this formula bar, we have a couple of more options. So if this is a percentage, which, which is a very common scenario here in financial reporting, just click on the percent, all right? This will uh, format, uh, format this formula as a percent. Uh, you have the decimal places here, so you can uh, display on, on two decimal places or not. A um, couple of formatting options, so let's make this bold and also italic, for example. And once you do that, make sure to click the but don't go back to report but click add because once you click add 
now the formula is added right and it's added for the whole row all right so now the zero bi has calculated this uh my gross margin percent as as a percent of revenue is 66.3 percent that was previous year this year it's 67.7 percent which is actually exactly 1.4 percentage points uh, uh growth rate uh and also in relative terms this is uh plus 2.1 percent but this one is more important here so that's my gross margin you can do the same for other things like operating income as a percent of of revenue uh just let's do this once more add formula so operating income as a percent tab um this time i'm i want to have operating income divided by revenue all right another percent again the formatting and add it's here all right so this was my pnl okay so this is my slicer here okay so again how did i how did i do the, the slicer so if i remove the slicer what happens whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. what happens now because i have both my uh, income statement and my balance sheet and cash flow you see i have everything here so i have this is the part up to net income then then my cash starts and actually this is already this is my balance sheet my assets here and my liabilities so this is basically the balance sheet portion of it and so on right but because i I have this report type column. I, I, I can now take my report um, type column. It's here. Just drop it. Drop it here. So you see? And it's or should already work. This is my PL. This is my balance sheet. It's not formatted yet in this visual. And my cash flow. So that's the simple trick. And you just turn this into a slicer. And uh, yeah, you can use it uh, as a drop down like this or you can use it as a as a horizontal list for example um where's this option maybe a horizontal slicer right so you have a couple of options here in power bi how to do your slicers but that's that's the idea right so this was my pnl balance sheet again now i would have to go so in the balance sheet uh we have a similar thing here we have the assets these are my assets and then i have the liabilities right here i would need to invert uh invert them right that's probably the the, the best thing to do with your uh balance sheet right so uh invert them okay this involves uh, some clicking here also in zebra bi the next thing that is planned is uh, a better user experience for this so inverting the whole group and also reading uh reading the uh, accounts types from from the database so that's that's coming in uh, not in 4.5 but uh very very soon with uh one of our next updates but for now so for now all right so this is this is how you get the balance sheet right so uh you can highlight certain certain rows like i don't know if you want to highlight you can highlight like this all right uh so this is almost done now you see i have my comments Okay, so I have explained how to how to build the comments table like this um, in my last webinar. Okay, so for this one, I'll share the link, but now I have those numbers. So I actually have three comments in my comment table. Okay, and now what I want to do is add uh, the comment markers. So first I'm commenting on my service and other revenue, right? Um, so how do i add the comments the comment markers here that you know would visually indicate the service and other revenue so that's this row here it's plus 1.5 million um okay so my comments table is here let me just open this all right and now again with version 4.5 of zebra bi you will find an extra placeholder here right this is new the comments placeholder 
right? So now you can do two things. Um, the best thing that we would recommend is to actually have a comment number. So if you have your own custom number of your comments, uh, right, then you take your um, number, comment number, insert it here. So these are my comments here, you see. And the uh, then the actual comment, so the text field, the comment text, which is in the table, just grab the field and put it as a secondary field here. All right. So now, now you see, uh, this is my service and over the revenue. And what happens is the second field here is also used as a tooltip. So, so the Zebra BI visual actually now enables you, enables the, the users so they can actually hover here and they will see the exact tooltip text here in, in all, ab above the uh, comment marker, the comment symbol, right? And of course you can design the, the tooltip so you can change the design of the tooltip in the standard, in the st Standard group of settings for the tooltip um, of Power BI. So, you know, you can actually, I don't know, instead of having a black one, you can have a, I don't know, a blue one like this. And then, of course, change the, the, the colors of your labels and, and stuff. So, so, you know, you can change this and, you know, increase the text size or whatever. So, you can design your tooltips. And so, so that's why this, this works quite nicely now with this. Um, version of uh, that supports the comments. Um, but the important thing now is that you actually link your comment matrix here or your smart narrative. If you're using the smart narrative for comments, you link the numbers with their actual positions of the comments within the visual. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, this is basically it. This is how you create the, the your basic report once you have this so let me go back to my original one okay once once you have built this you can now simply um, create uh, a number of, of different combinations so just take this page um, take this page and instead of having a table like this with comments and so on like you know let's do another another report let me just remove this to make some space and all right now let's let's create a couple of different reports what do you typically need in in financial reporting um maybe instead of having you know a separate month and so on you would actually love to see your month in your columns here so to have all the results in columns um so for this um you just take your month let me open my calendar here. So take your month and put it in the group placeholder. All right, now it's just showing my month. So now, of course, this slicer does not uh, make any, any sense here. So let me just uh, remove it. Okay, now I should get all the month here. All right, so you see now I have the results for my January, February, March, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> everything in one table. Of course, now this heavy visual presentation will not work. You'll have to condense it. So maybe just focus on your actuals and your variances, hide certain columns from the default view to make it a little bit more condensed. But still, in any case, if you have 20 columns for every month, I mean, this this will be a, a, a big table. So maybe you'll need to reduce the font size, but don't go don't go under don't go under, uh, I would say, 12 points. I mean, that's the that's the maximum. Otherwise, it'll be unreadable. So I'll show you a better way how to present trends, monthly trends, than just this simple uh, table. One thing that you can do, though, in a table is uh, add your quarters on top of the month field. So I'm doing this in the group placeholder, right? So the group placeholder uh, is um, uh, is meant for creating groups of columns in, in a, a Zebra BI table, right? So it works like a matrix basically, so or like a pivot table, right? Only on steroids with all the, the options here. So now you have uh, your um, quarters, so you can expand and collapse certain month, uh, you know, to make it more 
more clean and more organized. Uh, once you have your uh, quotas here, one thing you can do is now, now for example, in my in my case, I don't have the actuals for, for Q4, right? So you need to control your month. And one simple trick is just to use your month as a slicer so that, um, let me just show you. So the month and I'll switch to the, uh, Okay, so th this is a really simple, every user can, can just do this. Um, so if you do it like this, and mm, maybe on the selection controls, um, just turn this off, multi-select with control, because with this, you can now actually allow the users to simply select the month, all right, that you want to see. So, you know, up until September, and then when October, um, you know, results come in into a model, then, you know, you just click and enable also the, the October. That, that's the very simple way how to do it. Of course, you can also um, um, create, um, do it in a slightly better way in the model where you actually detect which uh, month is the last uh, month or the current month, the last actual month and uh, do this, um, do this uh, in, uh, in, in DAX. But this is a really quick way to, to do it. So now I only have my month up until September and you can add, um, you can add the uh, grand total. So just uh, click here. So this little plus, uh, plus icon here allows you to add like subtotals and grand totals. So if, if I show the grand total, all right, this is now my grand total across all of my columns, which, which is basically my year-to-date value, right? Um, not that, year-to-date, all right. So it's Q1, Q3, Q, Q2, Q3, all combined is basically year-to-date. So you can rename it have, it, have it here. So that's one view that you, you can create. And then once you have this, you know, just duplicate this, and now maybe instead of this one, you can do, um, you can create a, a month versus year to date. So that would be another option. So now instead of having this slicer, okay, switch between month, year to date values, you can actually just delete this and use the slicer as grouping, uh, use the period calculations as grouping. So take your period calculation, put it in the group placeholder. Now I get all of my uh, groups. Oh, now I have re uh, renamed the grand total. So that's actually the grand total. So like the total. Now the total is here. So total would be month to date plus year to date. Uh, so in this case, the Grand total does not really make sense, so let's let's hide it back. Hide the grand total. All right, but maybe the full year could be interesting. So you see now you have month-to-date results and the year-to-date uh, results. Uh, only this works uh, with a normal slicer. So now I have all the months selected. That's why the the number is actually uh, exactly the same, which is not what I what I wanted. In this case, let's just select one month. Okay, September, now I have September month to date versus September year to date, for example, or March, February, April, and so on, right? So, um, all right. Um, and then again, you can do this by a business unit, for example, instead of, instead of the period calculation, you can now bring in your business units to, to do a breakdown of by business unit. Mm. Just drop it in the drop it in your group placeholder. Boom. Income statement for all the business units. Right? I have four business units. The complete PL is here. Not only complete PL, if you would have all the information by business unit, you can now switch to cash flow. All right. In my case, I only only for the mobile business unit has information for cash flow, but uh, you know you can just switch between this. Also here, where we had the uh, 
the monthly values or maybe this one, right? Month to date, year to date. Here I also have the full year, right? This is now this is now my PL, but again, I can switch to balance sheet. So all the reports, you see, you simply copy, copy everything because it's so flexible, and you have this report switch. Each view is available for uh, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. So that's the beauty of merging all of your accounts together into one big accounts table and just do you know the whole financial reporting uh, directly um, uh, in in one one data model um, all right i hope this was um, interesting yeah um, slowly moving towards the end so um, one thing that is kind of chronically missing in, in financial reporting is um, our charts, our trend charts, um, right? So um, typically it's it's just tables. <laughs> when you say financial reporting, you know, it just means tables. Uh, it should not be like that. Um, you, you should make sure that you include also um, the uh, uh, trends you know charts how how the values are moving up or down and so on so so this is one view here now again to construct something like this this is really really easy so um let me remove this and this time i'll use the zebra bi charts visual okay and uh, because this one is better for displaying um trends so i'll do the actual value versus previous year i'll break this down by month all right and now i have my month here okay so this would be this is now uh the value but uh what i want to do now is now i can take my accounts and actually or maybe account groups okay so you see, these are my account groups. Because now I have all of my KPIs basically in this accounts table, I can simply switch between, all right, this is now revenue, this is gross margin, these are operating uh, expenses, operating income, net income, and so on, right? So you can basically use this as a filter or even better, let me remove this, take your account groups and put them into the visual just take your account group, put it again into this grouping placeholder, right? And what you will end up with are multiple charts within the same visual. Okay, so this is um, this is called the small multiples, and um, it's one of the I would say best features of the Zebra BI charts visual. So uh, you just take all of your accounts here so now of course now you now you get everything that you have put here so this is my pnl i could also i can actually also see the balance sheet <laughs> right so you can again switch between different types of accounts within the same page right <laughs> within the same visual um and only there's uh, one more caveat here my gross revenue is growing for 4.5 percent it's Got this to see you see 4.5 percent my gross margin is growing uh, not so much right something happened here but then my costs of goods sold are also growing so it's plus uh, plus um 12.5 and because my costs are growing this is not good so again in this visual i need to mark this i need to invert this specific element how do you do that right click and invert all right so basically for every account here for every chart you can invert this also my operating expenses whoa growing this is not good so invert the colors here in, invert the meaning of, of this particular chart and now yeah it's growing and this is not good so that's why the uh, uh hence the uh, uh arrow here is red okay so and now you can do this with uh, this type of chart or you know with column charts or any other charts uh, so this works nicely uh, in a small multiple um, 
Now I did this versus previous year. You can also show the same thing uh, versus plan and then also add the forecast versus plan if you have the forecast. So this is also quite a nice, uh, nice view that you can add to your financial statements. Um, okay. Um, yeah, we have one minute more. So this is the, uh, which one will I show as the last one? The bridge chart. Okay. Another idea, especially for the cash flow or for the things like net income and so on, you can do a bridge chart. Uh, I'll just quickly show it. So basically you have the opening value of your cash. Like, so like this, this is my cash at the beginning of, of my period. So like basically the opening balance, this is the opening balance and I have the closing balance, right? And then uh, my net cash flow, you know, goes up and down because of different uh, factors here, you know, because maybe my, my net income went up, you know, this increased my, my free cash flow um, and so on, right? So, so you do all the changes here in a waterfall chart and present it in, this, in, in the waterfall chart. And also maybe, maybe in this case, I would invert actually this chart. So this is again, the Zebra BI charts visual, and um, it actually allows you to show the charts with a vertical axis. So it, the setting is here. So if you turn it like this, it's actually better because it's a breakdown of your balance. And then you can also cut the axis if needed or not. So probably if you're opening balance, your, your balance will be much, much greater than your um, you know, net cash flow changes, right? Then you can also cut the axis here. Uh, otherwise, don't do it. Um, so this is uh, another just quick idea uh, what you can add here. So uh, the uh, bridge charts work quite nicely in financial reporting and also the audience. Uh, so the, the financial management and the top executives, they actually, uh, they, 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 they love those types of charts. And um, it's a good idea to include them into your financial reports. So this is the like the cash flow, you can do the same thing with like uh, the net income. You could have net income previous year and then net income this year or net income plan. And then, then the net, net income um, actuals and then show the, the differences between this. Okay, so this file, uh, this file together with other material, we will show once we send out the recording of the, um, of the webinar, so the um, uh, which will be in two days, uh, we will upload this to the Zebra BI web pages. Um, so um, if you want to try this, um, make sure to import the Zebra BI visuals uh, from the Microsoft App Source. This is a Microsoft certified uh, visual. There are two visuals: Zebra BI charts and Zebra BI tables, as I have uh, uh, demonstrated. Um, they are both certified by Microsoft. And um, so you're invited to use them. The basic version is actually free. So, so uh, you, you can do some of the things that I demonstrated uh, without, um, uh, without any, any license, but uh, for, all the, um, for all the features, you, you, you need a, um, a pro license for that. And now the resources, I have mentioned uh, the DAX, webinar and the webinar about the comments so i just want to make sure to to show the um to show this so the if you go to zebra bi web page so zebra bi.com if you go here zebra bi.com you will find uh resources by the way we have a new web page <laughs> um so resources under resources you'll see the webinars just go here and now all of the recordings are collected here. So um, for the uh, month to date versus year to date versus full year switches and so on, make sure to watch the webinar top five DAX tricks for super effective Pavia dashboards. Okay, so here is the basic thing about the modeling, um, uh, star schemas, um, calculator, you know, time intelligence and then uh, uh, plan versus forecast versus actual calculations and stuff like that. So this is the one. And then uh, if you like the um, dynamic uh, comments that, that I had on the right side of my report, 
uh, the technique how to build that was uh, explained in my latest uh, in my previous webinar which is here dynamic commentary in power bi so these are all uh, recordings collected here it's available free um, yeah feel free to browse through them all right tine do we have some questions now um yeah andre absolutely in fact i think this was the most lively discussion up to now uh, which i guess is a good sign um a good sign um the the, the kind of a bad side is that again we are not able to answer all the questions so yeah, um, yeah but let's yeah take we a couple try of questions so uh, so yeah we can take some some 10, 10 minutes for the questions so yeah just and for those me. that we weren't able to answer we will get uh, back to you after the webinar so yeah. um maybe yeah let's start first with this one from um uh, bolster sen hopefully i pronounced this name correctly um okay. so uh, which is the better data set uh, connected to subtotals versus calculating subtotals uh, which i guess um we can put it like yeah. this does it make more sense to put subtotals in your original data or to kind of apply subtotals afterwards uh with the help of row calculations um what would be your opinion here oh uh, yeah um that's a very good question and it's a hard decision i would say so i mean i would um i would put it like this so um i think it's uh it's almost necessary uh and it's it's really good if you can um calculate uh at least the subtotal so to have the basic structure with subtotals that's mandatory i would say to to solve in your data source or at least in power query all right so this would be like basic aggregation of of your accounts to your account groups subgroups and whatever how many levels you have right then um then for uh things like gross margins and so on uh, you have a couple of op options again you can do it in in you can do it in your data source and in power query which i think is best uh so that you actually already have your gross margin um this is still the same unit still like in millions or k euros dollars and so on so so up until here um you should do it um, at least in power query or even in your original data source in your uh, data warehouse or something like that so that's that's good if you can't do that then you can do it in dex all right so if you're forced to do it in dex if you have no other option then you can do it in dex but then you will uh, then the formula becomes quite uh, a little bit more complex because then you need to use the switch formula in order to add certain rows and and to to actually calculate each row uh, separately like gross margin as product revenue minus cost and so on so but still i this this is fine um, to do it with uh, outside of the visual if you can't do any of that then just take your accounts and also calculate the subtotal like uh, or, or intermediate result uh, in zebra bi visual now Zebra BI Visual actually allows you to do this. So now I can actually click on the cogs here and add uh, a calculated gross profit. I'll just, I'll just call it gross profit two now because this one is now going to be calculated here. So this would be my what revenue minus uh, cogs. Okay, and you add this, and now you you have it here all right it's the same result and because this is a uh, intermediate result you mark it here as a result you see the same row oh right it works <laughs> so but the thing is now the, the gross margin the one that was in the model is available to all the visuals right so if you have it in the model it's available to all the other visuals if it's if it's here this one it's only in this visual right it's only in this a table visual right so now of course you can take this table and copy the table or copy the whole the whole page and you will have this calculation inside but if you now create another chart a completely new table and something you won't have this calculated row uh in in the other visual right and this is the drawback of this right so um 
So, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the trade-off, right? Um, it's easier to do it here, but then you have to do it once, you have to type it in, and then you need to make sure that you actually copy the visuals from page to page, that's the drawback. Um, another drawback is that uh, because this element, for example, this one, does not actually exist in your data model, uh, things like filtering, I mean, you can, you can click on it, but um, the filter, you know, does not make any sense because this element, this element cannot filter other visuals because it's, uh, it simply does not exist in your data model, right? So, so if you can, it's still better to calculate it in your uh, data model. All right, long answer. I hope it was uh, um, understandable. All right, Tine, let's take uh, two, three more. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, well, maybe I would ask you this one. So we saw a lot of um, vertical waterfall charts and also so-called plus minus charts. And the question here is, um, which of those two would you kind of uh, advise to use in, in, in financial reports or income um, statements that you saw today? Um, yeah, well, I definitely, I personally uh, like the waterfall charts best. Um, uh, so, for example, the choice here is when you're presenting your actuals, I think your choices either either have um, a column, just you know numbers like this, um, or switch to the waterfall chart. I think this one is really really nice. You can also you can also have it. You can actually have it for all of your scenarios. Like uh, you can also have it like for previous year and actual. So this is highly visual. Well, th this is probably, uh, in my opinion, a little bit too much. I mean, because because they will have a very similar structure. It's enough that you have one of them. So, for example, I would turn this one into a column. Maybe have this one. If you have space, this is really beautiful, and everybody understands this structure. So, especially if your audience is, uh, you know, um, non-technical, uh, sorry, more technical people or non-financial management and so on, then, you know, uh, try to go for, for, the, for the visual uh, view. Now, if your users, if, you, if your users are more, not so much financial guys and so on, then you can switch to the bar chart. So the plus minus chart, because it's slightly, it's it's more, it's simpler. It's just simpler to understand. So this one, this chart is simpler than this chart. So now it depends on your audience, right? If they're already used to waterfall charts here and there, you know, go for waterfalls straight away. Um, they will, they will, most people will like them. If you think it's too early, then maybe you start with this one. Just you know, roll out reports like like this one. This is quite understandable. Everybody understands this erosion of margin here that it goes, you know, from revenue down to gross profit and exactly for how much, and especially the subtotals, you know, this is very understandable for people. Once they look at it, you know, one time, two times, they, they will love it. And this one is simple. Roll this out, have this for, um, you know, have this like this for a for, for couple of months, a couple of reporting periods, and then switch to this one. <laughs> Just update the report, switch to this one, and roll it out. <laughs> so did you gradually, you know, um, uh, just it's kind of a change management, you know, you go you go a little bit slow, slower. So that's that would be my recommendation then. <laughs> okay, uh, Andre, thanks a lot. Um, maybe. Maybe also uh, there were quite a lot of questions regarding regarding comments. You know how to kind of a. Uh, have the comment markers on a certain place uh, within the chart, meaning uh, next to the right account and next to the correctly right. selected month. So maybe just additional short yep. explanation because this, there were yep. quite a lot of questions for this this topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, a valid topic. So um, I dealt with this topic uh, in my latest webinar. So if you go there, it was a one hour session on exactly how to model for, for this. But so if you want to, in short, so here you see that this comment, this 
comment number one refers to service and other revenue. And it's also rendered here exactly on the same, on the right place. And this one here is for research and development, and this one is for sales and marketing. And this is all in March. Now, if I switch to April, okay, it's a different month. I have different, you know, I have four different, um, completely different um, comments here. So now I have uh, the service and other revenue here. I have my research and development here and, and so on, right? So um, how do you make sure that um, the comments show up, appear and refer to exactly the right accounts and right, exactly the right period? So you need to have this uh, link here. So this is my comments table. Let me show you how the comments table looks like. So just to make it a little bit more. So this is my comments table. The comments table is actually quite simple. So, so this is my comment here. Let me zoom in. Hopefully everybody can see this. So it's just a, a text column with the comments, but next to it, I have the account ID. So in your comments table, you need to have your account ID, right? And my account ID uh, here, so then you simply write your comment, and next to your comment, you simply write the number of this account. So number two means my service and other revenue. This comment refers to my account number six, which is research and development. This comment refers to 14, which is long-term, short-term investments. That's from the balance sheet. Okay, this one is, I don't know, maybe something for the cash flow, which is my, you know, account number three, nine and so on right so this is how you link your comments to your account it's quite simple really so just add a column of with your uh, accounts and account ids and another one for the period for the reporting period so all of these comments so this comment refers to you know march 2018 this one refers to march 2018 this one refers to april Right, so just basically add the comments and now you simply use this one and this one, these two columns as the links. So see, this is my date ID from the comments table that I just demonstrated is related to my calendar. The same calendar that I'm using for my initial table with the data. And the same thing here, you see, comments, so my account table actually filters the comment and my account table filters the financials. It's the same account table, so it should be the same ID here. Um, so hopefully this was understandable. And then, you know, then you can simply take the comment uh, text from your comments table. Where did I put it now? Too many things open at the same time, voila, boom first comment and also the number it's better to also it's actually better to have your number here so uh, maybe also one little um but okay in this case it will be the same so uh, you can also just use the same uh, uh, not really so already in, in this case it's it's good to have the comment number here um okay the comment number is uh, maybe one more thing that i would recommend adding to your comment table so for example, if you have your comment, this is my first comment, uh, first comment in my in, in uh, March. Okay. So so now I should have the comment number. Where is it? Um oh, it's here, sorry. So the comment number. You see, this is just a sequential number of my comments. So this is my first comment in March second comment in 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 march um for my pnl and then the third comment in march for my pnl then this one is my first comment for the balance sheet and second and third right so so that you also have this number so that you control exactly the numbering that is used here in the marker both here and both here Okay, hope this made it a little bit more clear. Uh, but the details are in the previous web webinar.
All right, Tina, uh, we'll need to wrap it up. Uh, do you have a, like a short one uh, before we? Yeah, maybe maybe one last uh, one last question. So there was a lot of questions regarding row level calculations. We know this was highly anticipated feature. So glad uh, glad to see so many interesting in this one. Uh, but maybe if you can just once again show. Um, how to maybe create a really simple one and also um, there were a couple of questions how do you control where this newly created row level calculation mm -hmm. is positioned within your visual so if you mm -hmm. can maybe just slightly focus on this yeah. one uh, also yeah they're all meaningful questions uh when uh, when this version 4.5 will be released we will also have um a couple of videos and and tutorials in our knowledge base uh, about uh, about this, how it actually works, and so on. So, for example, um, so the basic, where does it appear? Uh, so, if I go under re revenue here, and so I, I right click, now I add a formula. So this formula will be added uh, below the revenue. So it's basically so the position of this is linked. To my revenue so this will always be below my revenue so for example add formula and now this will be I don't know revenue to now this is a good trick for example now that the, the year is ending you know you can do you can do something like this multiply your revenue by 20% add this cool <laughs> And uh, but the thing is, so it, it it will stick it will stick to this one. So the position is the position is always below the element where you add them. You can actually add multiple formulas on the same element uh, above, uh, below the same element. So for example, if you go back to revenue and add another one, like uh, revenue three, you know, you can add the formula and it'll appear below revenue two and so on so you can add multiple formulas um so there are a couple of limitations uh in in this first version um uh, for example um you can only use elements from from the the uh from the same level for example this is one of the limitations right now but of course we will work with the next updates also to uh to support as many uh scenarios as possible um i would I would uh, encourage everyone to reach out to us. Uh, you know, once you will test this, try this on your own, roll it out. Um, please um, give us feedback. I mean, it's your feedback that makes our product, uh, you know, better from update to update. We have an update every month, and you know, um, we're happy to hear about your requirements, your ideas. What what do you do with this? And and then you know, try to support more scenarios in next versions. Yeah, so with this, Tina, I, I'm afraid we need to wrap it up. Wrap yeah, it up yeah. for this crazy year. Um, um, Andre, thanks a lot for another great uh, webinar. Um, and yeah, from my side, uh, thanks to everybody for joining for joining this session. And yeah, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we are posting a new video almost on a weekly basis now. So so make sure you subscribe to zebrabi.com slash zebra uh, youtube.com zebrabi uh, on our uh, uh, channel there and uh, stay healthy, uh, stay safe, um, and see you in the next year. Cheers.